me installing an exhaust system in my 981 Cayman S. If you recall from the first video when I got the car, I said I absolutely loved it, but it was a bit too quiet. So today I'm providing a solution to that problem by installing a valved sole exhaust. Now this install is going to be split up into two parts. In the first video, I'm going to install the actual exhaust. I'm going to take it for a spin, do some sound clips and all of that. In the second video, I'm going to hook up all the electronics to make the valving work. So this is it. This is the whole system. It actually came very nicely wrapped. Uh, these are your mufflers. These are your tips. And you can specify what tips you want to buy. Uh, this is your connecting uh, X-pipe. Uh, you've got your hardware over here, your gasket, some decals. And it also comes with an installation manual. Uh, and then in this box, you've got all the uh, valving uh, electronics. So you've got your remote controls. And underneath, you've got uh, the vacuum tube and all of that. So starting from the left side, first thing we do is we're going to remove these two 12 millimeter nuts and bolts holding the headers and the rear part of the exhaust together. Now in my case, they're pretty rusted out, so I fully expect them to break, but let's see how it goes. Oh wow. Dude, this PB blaster really works. No camera editing tricks or anything, soaking these super rusty 12 millimeter nuts in PB Blaster really worked. This little nut is slowly disintegrating. It is really getting smaller and smaller in my eyes. That's how rusted out it is. <laughs> it is seriously melting. So what I'm gonna do, I think I'm gonna hit it with a hammer and hopefully I can split it in half and I get it out that way. And it's day two of the install. I actually got stuck last night removing some bolts between the headers and the exhaust. What a pain in the neck. But for the most part, we are there. Let me show you the progress. The uh, exhaust bolts between the headers and the actual exhaust, I had to dremel those out. So I cut the nut into uh, pieces and I hammered it out. So that worked out on the other side. I had the same issue where I had to dremel them out. The last piece is removing these one, two, three, four bolts holding the, uh, the actual exhaust in place. And to do so, we have to use an E14. Now, I don't have an E14, but you can use a 10 millimeter regular wrench and it's going to work just fine. Before I do the last one, I'm going to suspend the exhaust with my uh, transmission jack that I have, which will allow me to hopefully drop it nice and easy. See, there you go. 10 millimeter goes exactly on an E14, but I'm removing the back ones first. This is my transmission jack, or rather motorcycle jack. It goes up. So as we lower the exhaust and as it slowly starts sitting on the jack, check this out. It is separating here. So you just help yourself with a screwdriver, but pry outwards so it doesn't damage the actual header piece. So now we're going to lower this. And as we lower it, obviously the whole thing drops. Now as it drops, I've got to make sure the actual muffler clears the axles. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are almost there. We're gonna put it all over the axle. And we did it. <laughs> So this is what the exhaust looks like when it's off the car and you can actually see it's a huge chunk of metal. Before we do anything else, I think we owe ourselves a quick start with no mufflers, just the uh, catalytic converters that are sitting on the headers. <laughs> that was just a test. The next step is to remove this bracket and reinstall it on the car because the sole exhaust comes in pieces so you can 
assemble the bracket first and then do one piece and then do the other. I actually ended up dremeling the bracket itself. Seems like the easiest thing to do. So this is essentially how this bracket goes. Now it's easier to show it to you uh, without the actual exhaust, but check this out. This is what it looks like under there. Uh, you've got your oil cooler, a bunch of other stuff in there. Very compact. This is a second brace that I installed when I was doing the sway bars. It connects this side to that side and it uh, stiffens up the rear a little bit. But essentially now this hanger goes like this and it gets attached using the four uh, nuts or the four bolts that we removed. I've got to say DIY work is never easy. I'm sort of working at it for a, you know, a couple of minutes here and there as I'm doing house chores and taking out the actual bolt from the header section was actually a major pain in the neck. Actually, I just finished this one. The other side, my son is already sleeping upstairs, so I have to wait until tomorrow. But at least I'm gonna put this side together now. But let me show you exactly what the issue is. So as you can see, this is where your catalytic converter is. This is where the new exhaust is gonna bolt on. This is where the old pieces were. The only thing is this one is so tight in there that you have to really hammer them out. The problem is you cannot hammer them out because you don't have enough clearance here. Unless you have the suspension off or you have the headers completely off, it is a major pain in the neck. So what I, what I ended up doing is I ended up dremeling this area, then drilling through it. And then as I drill through it, I hammered it out. I got these awesome Milwaukee drill bits, which worked wonders. They would go straight through the screw and they were able to uh, get this out for me. Otherwise, I will be royally screwed. So next, we're gonna put these bolts in its space. There's a washer at the end because we're going to be putting this section of the exhaust system in. The company also supplies new gaskets. And now, let's gently maneuver it in place. So, as you can see, it is resting on the hanger and this is going over the axle and I loosely installed these nuts. And then here, this is just gonna rest on this hanger with no brackets or anything. This thing is kicking my ass. If you're hoping for an easy install, I don't know if this is exactly it for four main reasons. And it's each one of the bolts that are sitting in the, in the actual headers right after the catalytic converter. So, Last night I was able to extract the other two, which I walked you through. This morning I spent another two hours trying to extract the other two. I did the Dremel, I heated around it, tried to uh, bang it out, but I couldn't because there's really no access to it unless you either take the suspension off or take the headers completely off. So I ended up again Dremeling the bolt out and then drilling into it and, and, and progressing with a bigger and bigger drill bit until I finally got through it. And I finally, finally, after hours, was able to get this in. Let me show you exactly what it looks like. So this is the final product. This is what it looks like. You see, again, this was a painstaking process of trying to get all of those things out. And uh, at the same time, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna vacuum the catalytic converter just in case we got some debris in there. I did have a piece of uh, tape over there, uh, but you never know. This is the old gasket. This is the new gasket. They do say that if you're racing the car, you should be using OEM gaskets. So maybe one of these days we'll replace them. But for now, we're gonna use uh, these gaskets. They also, as I mentioned on the other side, provide these high quality nuts and bolts. And these nuts are high pitched. So I feel like if they start rusting away, it'll be easier for anyone who's removing it to grab them and redo them. Before we actually add the muffler, they say to put this X-pipe in first and then marry this muffler together. Pay attention to the tips, because not only do, we, do you adjust them up or down, but also left and right. These are the tips that the company supplies you with. You can uh, choose a couple of different ones. I chose the slanted ones with the sole logo because I want to represent quality. 
Ooh la la. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, everything is tightened. So, these guys are tightened. The exhaust is singing, sitting on its hangers. Same thing on the other side. From the bottom, what I had to do is, first I adjusted the tips, so how far out and sort of slanted, because you have plenty of adjustability, uh, so use these. And then uh, the last thing, you tighten the X-pipe, which brings the whole sort of tip assembly either up or down. So you're gonna, it, it's up to you. For me, I decided to go with something like this, sort of straight up. Uh, it gives me a bit of room between this trim and the actual tips. And from up here, it sticks out uh, just fine in my mind. Okay, first start ever. Now, let's remember, I'm in the garage, so there's gonna be a lot of sound bouncing off the walls, but I'm super excited. So, let's hear it. Oh my gosh. So now, keep in mind, the valves are permanently open. Part two of the video, as I mentioned earlier, is going to be installing all the electronics and vacuum tubing to uh, to get them just to close. But let's see. Oh. I hope the sound picks up on this microphone because I'm hearing a bit of a burble, and then soon I am gonna attach a microphone to the rear of the bumper, so stay tuned for that. <laughs> By the way, the exhaust is going to take about a month to get fully loud, that's what the manual says. So whatever you hear now, don't judge it yet. We're gonna have to do a, another video review later. gonna get louder but the sound in the cabin is as close to perfect as it gets oh my god third gear
done. Yes, the exhaust sounds absolutely fantastic. Now, what's not fantastic is I am getting some sort of a brake message, completely not related to the exhaust. It probably had to do with the fact maybe when I was hammering the uh, the, the the bolts out, maybe I nicked the line or something. So I'm, I'm going to investigate what the parking issue is. I'm gonna try to make some additional external clips. I'll put them in a separate video. Uh, but for now, it is uh, it is what we have here and I'm super, super happy. The exhaust sounds so good, I'm telling you. It sounds really, really good. Anyways, uh, let me know what you think of this exhaust uh, and the install by commenting below. And as always, thank you very much for watching and I'll be seeing you in the next video. Bye-bye. And we quickly solutioned this issue. The issue has to be blamed on me, unfortunately. As I was working on this section, I bent this bracket outwards, which means it pushed all the cables, which means as I put the wheel on, it started rubbing on the cables, which, and this is what happened. Uh, not, a, not a pleasant sight. So we're gonna bend it back, we're gonna push it back, and now uh, what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to re-solder this thing. Uh, so it looks like the electronic parking brake has been affected, uh, and also the ABS, although the ABS goes in here, but I guess maybe they do go hand in hand. So that seems to be the issue and it's also interesting to see how the exhaust has changed its color. It was all silver and now it's turning brown and let's take a look quickly on the tips. Look at the tips. Remember how the tips used to be uh, silver? Well after one spirited drive they turned brownish or goldish. Uh, I gotta say I don't, I don't mind it but it's quite interesting how quickly they turned gold. And then again, on this side, see, this is how this is supposed to be bent outwards. Uh, so yeah, this is completely, completely my issue. Uh, but while we're here, let's take a look at it again. Again, no issues whatsoever. These valves we're gonna take care of uh, at a later date. Uh, but again, so interesting how the color is completely has completely changed. Very, very interesting. Um, so yeah, we're gonna be tackling this job. It is completely my fault. Uh, but for now, enjoy these tips. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.